So now we're about to weld on the strain, so it's got to shape that out a little bit more, um, clean it all up, and then weld it all on. So as you can see, it's got a nice gradient fall all the way down on the turbo, so there's no like low spots. The lowest point is this point here. So quickly shape that out, clean it up, weld it on, and that'll be the drain side of things done. Here goes the drain all on the cart now, so it's actually on an angle that way. And as you can see, it's got a nice gradient coming down, so there's no other low points. That point there where it enters the case is the lowest point, so there'll be zero chance of pulling up anywhere. Bracket there to support it, it's nice and strong, and probably better lift the whole cart up off it. Here it is from down this angle there. So you can see how it's on a bit of an angle. And it's gonna come straight out over here to the turbo. So that's all done now, and we've also had to pull all the turbo and exhaust out of the back, just so we can get the drill in there, so we could drill and tap our oil pressure regulator there. So that's all mounted now. So the last thing left mechanically for this whole go um, the whole cart is to just sort out how we're going to run the vacuum lines. So we'll do that next. Bringing it back old school so we don't have a mill to obviously machine the flanges on the plenum flat. So what we're going to do is just simply lap it on our weld table. It's flat enough for what it is. A gasket will easily take up the deviation. So if you have a look here, you can see it's touching there. Likewise with there, it's touching there but nothing in the center. So We'll lap it flat and that should um, yeah, make it seal up nice. See the flange is nice and flat, took about 25 minutes or so, so what we need to do now is get the grinder in there, die grinder, and um, blend these excessive bits of tube in there. So I sort of jumped the gun, I forgot to record it as per usual, just like getting things done. So what we've done, we've made some adapters, we're using swage lock fittings this time. They're a little bit more compact than the AN fittings and they will stand a heat because we've got to drop past the exhaust down the front. So I machined up this one here, got the little o-ring groove where the factory breather is on the V-Rod block, so that's going to go in there. Use the other one off the head there. Here's a hard line we made, so the first one, as you can see, it angles that way, angles this way, and then also angles that way, so three different angles. And it'll fit pretty good once it's all on. So I just need to put the ferrules and the nuts on there, and yeah, that'll be that side of things done. So now we're up to the second breather line, we need to make an adapter, so we've just machined up a quarter MPT, so we can screw one of these in, and then start bending up the hard line. The nuts assembled with the ferrules, so as you can see the free floating, so what happens when this crushes that ferrule, and it has nowhere else to go, it starts biting into the tube and that's how you get that seal there. Cool as the turbo setup look out of the cart, you can see all the shape to it and all the work put into it. Pretty cool piece of art, really. So the reason why we had to pull it out is because we needed to drill and tap this plate here for our oil pressure regulator, as you can see. I couldn't get the drill in there. So that's all done now. What we need to do is establish a feed from the motor somewhere. So either off the oil cooler there or somewhere off the block. More than likely from the oil cooler because it'll be an easy route down there. So what we're up to now though, we're going to finish off one of the last jobs and that's the vacuum. So I managed to tee into here and we've got a port down the bottom so we'll run a line down here and then we'll make up a manifold down here somehow. Don't know if it's going to be this shape here or if it's just going to be a straight manifold. We'll see what type of material we've got lying around and try and make something. Never done this one before, put the old animal in the chuck, bit of stock in the tool post holder and utilizing it as a vertical mill basically, I couldn't see why it wouldn't work. We'll give it a go and see, yeah, see how it turns out. I'm not thinking this one through, so we made it, but didn't allow for the thread depth. So, big a bit of bullet in there, starting a new one. So we've machined the outside, we've just come along here, we've marked out our centers, so we're going to have six 1.8 MPT ports. 
happy with how our little manifold turned out. Everything went to plan. So as you can see, we've got six 118PT holes in here. So one will be an inlet. We've got four ports, and then we have, well, we actually have five ports in the end one as well. As you can see on the back, we've milled that in the lathe as well. And we've got two M6 blind holes there. That way there we can mount it. So it's having a free floated and suspended by the swage lock lines. So yeah, that's basically it. Now we just got to decide how we're going to put it in the cart. If we're going to run it horizontal or we're going to run it vertical like that. So we'll have a quick think and see how we're going to do it. You may remember in earlier videos, I wasn't happy with how the wastegate pulled a bit when I built the manifold. There was nothing to hold it or jig it off. So it's pointed down and slightly in towards the turbo. If I didn't mention it, you probably wouldn't notice it. So what I did was I ended up straightening it up and obviously I thought I might have been able to get it by twisting this and the wastegate pipe, but now the wastegate pipe doesn't fit so I've got to make a whole new one. Here goes our manifold all done now. As you can see, we've got a bit of complex tubing going on here. Everything's working out sweet. Here's the adapters in now. And here goes the lines all done. Quickly jump around this side. You can see where they come out. I've sort of miscalculated this measurement here. It should have been a little bit lower, but for how long it took to make these, I'm probably not gonna bother redoing this one. The only reason why I did have a bit of a gap, as you can see, we've got a PCV valve. And I didn't, it was quite a big diameter, so I didn't want it hitting this tube down here by the time we put the other A in fitting on there. So nonetheless, all good, we'll just leave that for the now and we'll start making the little quarter inch lines for the... So here we have our first little bend, so a short little 90 and then we're going to come down, follow the fin angle and then meet up to that one down there. So I just grabbed this pipe, I don't know if I can do this but if you look at this, by time, if I match that fin angle by the time I... by the time we get down to the point we need to get to, basically it looks like a long sloping ramp. So we have a quick think, we might change this angle I think. Well that looks a lot better, so we managed to fold it up this angle here, so it doesn't quite match the fins, but that's okay, so I thought about it. If you look at this section here from that cross member, the engine cross member, this section here, we're going to split it up, so I decided to run a sharper angle, so that we can split this section here, so as you can see from that side there it's all running the straights, and this side here it's running the angles up and matches the rest of the motor, so it doesn't quite match the fins, but it looks a lot better than a big sloping ramp that it was going to be. So let's make up the second line. Second vacuum line in, looking really good. Pretty happy with how it's starting to turn out now. As you can see, nice flow, ample clearance everywhere. You can see how we dog leg that one down there. Quite a few bends in there, quite intricate. Running nice and parallel, we can still give a tune up later on, but there we have it. So that's the wastegate all plumbed up. So now we need to do the ECU and the fuel regulator. How cool is that? Super happy with how all the hard lines turned out. First time doing a full complete hard line setup on a motor before. I've done the odd one line here and there but never done a full setup like this. Very intricate, um, super expensive way to do it. It's a lot cheaper just to do AM fittings but nonetheless this cart, the whole thing is unique so I might as well go out the gate on it. So very happy as I've said before how intricate all the tube work looks and then you come down sideways and then it also looks hidden and real symmetrical and clean. So it took a long time to design all this. As you would have seen on Instagram, probably be at least 20 little tubes I had to chuck out because they just weren't quite right to start again. So yes, it was a very expensive project doing these hard lines. Um, quite a few wasted ferrules and stuff. But overall, very happy with the look. Definitely gave it that industrial look. It's filled out that negative space that we had on this side because as I mentioned before, there's so much going on here and we had nothing happening here. For obvious reasons, we've got an exhaust running this side, so yep, as I say, it would have been a lot cheaper to run AN lines. We'll jump over this side, we'll have a look what we've done. So if you can see the fuel pressure regulator, we have to tap this out to 1 MPT to accommodate this dash 4 fitting. reason why we're going to be running a bit of line here is because this is fixed to the chassis, and it's not like the wastegate pipes where this is all joined to the motor, so the swage locker will allow for that thermal expansion, Whereas this being hard on the chassis, you could run into wrecking one of the fittings or something. So I thought we'll put a bit of tube in here, this will be cut off. Sorry, a bit of dash hose in there, dash 4, and that will allow for a bit of vibration. And this one here is going to the ECS overall, very happy with how it looks.